thriller at Upton Park. There needs to be a winner at Old Trafford. Can the Hammers relive their 2001 Cup exploits? Class. Or will the Red Devils prove too strong? The FA Cup third round replay. Manchester United v West Ham. Wednesday from 8, live and free on ITV. Good evening and welcome to ITV News in Central. Tonight's main stories. A blanket of snow turns the East Midlands into a picture postcard. But there's a warning of travel disruption with fresh falls on the way. We're out there gritting the network. So we've got five gritters out there citywide at the moment, treating all the main principal road ne network, making sure it stays safe. Support for more cameras after almost half a million pounds in fines was collected in just a few months from motorists driving in a bus lane. And the Midlands gets ready for War Horse, the moving story of a boy and his horse set during the First World War. The weather forecasters had predicted it would snow and in the end, the East Midlands bore the brunt with several centimetres falling across the region. Thankfully, the gritters have been out in force and most of our transport networks were unaffected. But more trouble could be on the way with temperatures expected to drop well below freezing tonight. Phil Brewster reports. Not quite the whiteout some had predicted, but the East Midlands still woke up to find itself enveloped in a wintry blanket. This was the scene at Stoke Rochford in Lincolnshire earlier today. It was a similar picture at Buxton in Derbyshire. Drivers having to proceed with caution on icy surfaces. On the main roads, conditions were easier. On the A52 into Nottingham, traffic flowed freely. And on the M1 in Nottinghamshire, it was slow moving, but no gridlock. But one motoring organisation says the bad weather has resulted in a 20% spike in the number of breakdowns. 92% of our work will be flat batteries. You've also got a lot of burnt out clutches from people spinning and slipping in the snow. Um, a favourite one as well is blown fuses. Uh, people turn the wiper blades on when the snow's on the wipers. They need to make sure that the cars are cleared of snow. Uh, nothing worse than seeing a car going down the road covered in snow and looking through a little peeping hole. There is the risk of ice or snow over the, the, certainly later on today and over the evening. Uh, so our crews will remain on standby and will be out on the East Midlands network and, and the East network. Hundreds of gritters have also been out overnight in the region. In Nottingham, the City Council has around 3,500 tonnes of salt stockpiled in its depots. And with plunging temperatures forecast, are preparing for another busy 24 hours. We're out there gritting the network. So we've got five gritters out there citywide at the moment, treating all the main principal road ne network, making sure it stays safe. We'll continue gritting through this afternoon. Uh, and we're proposing most likely we'll be gritting again this evening. Elsewhere, Nottinghamshire County Council were also preparing for the worst. This morning, council staff were being trained at Bestwood Country Park in how to drive 4x4 vehicles in snow, so that if conditions worsen, they can continue to provide a meals or wheels service to the elderly. During the last bad weather, we had 4x4 people uh, driving the uh, delivery people out to people's homes to make sure they get a hot meal. And it's those kind of people who, who really do rely on our services, and we, it is quite essential we do get out there and we see them. I think it's daft having a 4x4 car sticking in the car park when the people are not if you need some help, so I'd rather get out there and do something, really. Despite the blizzard-like conditions, the region's rail companies reported no problems or delays to services, and East Midlands Airport remains open. But several schools have fallen victim to the bad weather. Worst hit was Derbyshire, with 13 either shut or having to close early. The snow wasn't a hardship for everyone, though. Those not having to battle to work managed to find time to play. But with more cold snaps on the way, winter's icy grip may yet take its toll. And with forecasters warning of more snow, we'll be joined by Emma Jessen a little later in the programme with details of what we can expect. A local authority which raised almost half a million pounds by fining motorists who strayed into bus lanes could introduce more cameras to penalise drivers who ignore the warning signs. The city mayor, Sir Peter Salisbury, told ITV News the scheme isn't a licence to print money. He believes it's greatly improved the reliability of bus services. Rajiv Popat reports. Take a walk along Charles Street in Leicester city centre, look up and you'll find quite a few cameras looking down. Commit a crime, the chances are it'll be recorded. A 
and stray into a bus lane, the chances are you'll be filmed and fined. Between July and October last year, 20,000 motorists were caught on this road and nearby Causeway Lane. That generated almost £450,000 for the council. It's now considering installing cameras in Rutland Street and Elston Road. The two bus only areas that we've introduced so far have been very successful indeed and they have very much improved the ability of the buses to get through and of course as a result of that the punctuality and reliability of the, uh, of the service. I'm looking for some advice from the Council Scrutiny Committee as to whether it does make sense to, to go on and do these other areas or indeed whether we've already achieved the major benefit by doing these two areas. There are those who are for and against more cameras policing our bus lanes but today everyone we spoke to was united. I'm a bus driver myself and I've realised that it's a nightmare going down the bus lanes and you can't move with all cars coming into it and not obeying by the laws. I think it's obviously going to hurt at all. I think it might help traffic flow quite a lot. If it takes that to stop them, so be it. I drive, but if it's a bus lane and they're going to take advantage, try to take advantage, it's their own stupid fault. The fines range from £30 to £90. The council says claims that drivers are being used as a cash cow are simply unfair and untrue. They say all the money generated from these cameras is put to good use. It enables us to provide subsidised transport for the, for the elderly and for those with disabilities and it enables us also to introduce more schemes in the city that provide good quality public transport at prices that people can afford. The Council Scrutiny Commission will discuss whether cameras actually deter drivers from venturing into bus lanes on January the 23rd. Rajiv Poppert, ITV News, Leicester. Budding disabled entrepreneurs will get extra support to start their own business in 2013, the government announced today. Yes, support will be offered to pay for specialised equipment, support workers and travel costs to help get new businesses off the ground, as John Willits explains. Reshma Patel runs her own consultancy business in Leicester. Since setting it up, she's had extensive help from the government's access to work scheme. But when she first asked for help in starting the business, the advice on offer wasn't what she'd expected. I was going to say, what support will I get if I set up my own business? And the lady at the job centre more or less turned around and said, you'd be better off going on to benefits. Reshma ignored the advice and set her business up. The access to work scheme was a big help later on, paying for a support worker and travel costs. But from today, more help will be available at a much earlier stage. Today what we're doing is helping people with disabilities who'd like to set up their own business. And we're saying, come to us with your business plan, go to the job centre, ask to speak to the access to work advisor and say, how can we be of assistance if you want to set up a business? The government has been criticised over its policies on disabled workers in the last 12 months. Protests have been held over the closure of Remploy factories. The focus now is on helping disabled workers into mainstream jobs and encouraging more to become self-employed. I think it's very encouraging because I think we do need to get more young disabled people setting up their own businesses with the right support. So to actually support somebody with a business idea right at the beginning um, and then move away slowly, I think is an absolute brilliant idea, you know. Half a million disabled people are currently self-employed. The government wants to increase that number by making it easier to get businesses off the ground. John Willits, ITV News, Leicester. There's outrage tonight after an attack by a dog on a swan at a nature reserve near Retford in Nottinghamshire. The bird was so badly injured it had to be put down. One witness says he was so shocked by the casual reaction of the dog's owner. Viewers may find some of the images distressing. Nimesh Joshi reports. The image is so shocking it's had to be blurred. A dog's sickening attack on a swan. The bird's horrific injuries led to it being destroyed by the RSPCA. The attack was caught on camera by warden David Manifield near to the Idle Valley Nature Reserve in Lound near Retford on Wednesday. The dog was about 200 yards from its owner and it was mauling the swan 
and this was the most vicious attack that I have ever seen. I was sick to my stomach um, and so were a lot of other people as well and it's something that really shouldn't happen on the edge of a nature reserve. But what's just as shocking is the almost casual reaction of the dog's owner to the dreadful incident. I actually came down the lane and filmed the gentleman and when he saw me filming him he then decided that was time to go and get the dog. He went over and eventually got control of his dog but rather than do anything about the swan he simply continued on his walk around the field. The owner of the canine has now been spoken to by Nottinghamshire Police who are now investigating. You're watching ITV News in the central region still to come. A winning start for the new man in charge at Forest. And in the weather, after a wintry start to the week, I'll have the latest on the snowfall and the weather warnings. All the details coming up shortly. There's more controversy tonight over Stafford Hospital. ITV Central can reveal two new serious complaints have been made about the treatment of patients. Both concern people who have been admitted in the past few days. An investigation is underway into how an elderly man who suffered a stroke was sent home after being diagnosed as having a trapped nerve. And the hospital has said sorry to another elderly patient who was sent home without the proper care in place for him there. Keith Wilkinson has this exclusive report. I came out of hospital and I, I couldn't, I'm doing it now, but I could not close this hand. It kept springing back like it, like it was an elastic band. Fred Darlington describing his symptoms after he was sent home from Stafford Hospital. He'd been taken there a short time earlier by a paramedic. He says he'd been assured at the hospital that he had not had a stroke. He was told it may be a trapped nerve and he would be given physiotherapy in two weeks' time. Luckily for him, later in the day, his partner was giving a piano lesson at their home to the daughter of a friend who is a GP. The doctor called to collect her and spotted further symptoms and concluded he had probably suffered a stroke and could be about to have another, more serious one. My hand was shaking like that when this lady doctor came to the house and I couldn't stop it. She said you must get him to North Stafford. We shouldn't lose any time in case he does have another stroke. So she said, and how can they treat him with a physiotherapist if they don't even know what's wrong with his hand? Mr Darlington was taken this time by ambulance to hospital in Stoke. Here he was given a brain scan, which revealed he had had a stroke and he was given vital medication to help prevent a recurrence. When I think about myself and the situation as it is now, where I've proved that I've had a stroke, I am not very pleased at all. In a statement, the hospital's chief executive, Lynn Hill Tout, says Mr Darlington was seen by a doctor who asked a stroke consultant to assess him further. He felt the problem was not typical of a stroke. He made arrangements for Mr Darlington to be followed up the following week to carry out further tests. We are sorry to hear that Mr Darlington was subsequently found to have had a stroke. We will be carrying out an investigation. And in another case which happened last month, relatives of 79-year-old Ted Worrell say he was sent home where he was living alone from Stafford without proper equipment and nursing care he needed. I'm absolutely shocked. I'm angry. I feel that they've neglected him. In a statement, Colin Ovington, Director of Nursing, said, We are sorry for any distress caused to Mr Worrell and his family. This should not have happened. The family contacted us and we thought we had done everything we could to remedy the situation. Keith Wilkinson, ITV News. Now, it's been a successful book, a highly successful film, and a sellout theatre production in the West End. Now, the stage show of War Horse is coming to Birmingham. Yes, the story of the First World War, told through the eyes of a horse, has captured the hearts of audiences across the globe. 
But what's made the stage show stand out is its unique use of puppetry, as Victoria Davis reports. It's a tale of courage, loyalty and friendship between a boy and his horse. Do solemnly swear that we shall be together again. Set in the First World War, the stage show of War Horse has been watched worldwide by nearly three million people. And today, the star of the show, Joey, showed his delight at bringing the National Theatre production to the Birmingham Hippodrome. War Horse is a really extraordinary piece of theatre, and I think audiences won't ever see anything quite like it. I mean, it's a very, very beautiful piece of theatre. Um, and we've been very fortunate to do War Horse on Broadway and it's now been running in the West End for five years. But for me, the most exciting thing of all will be bringing it here back to the Hippodrome. The horses are all life-size puppets handcrafted from cane by a South African company. The puppeteers go through intensive training to make the horses in the show come alive. We train our puppeteers and study real horse behaviour uh, a lot to try and get a level of naturalism in the puppet that means an audience really, really invests straight from the beginning of the story. Even when the horse is, you know, relaxed and it's stable, standing still, you'll still see it breathing, you'll see it looking, you'll see it listening, it's the tiny, tiny details. And I think we encourage the different teams of puppeteers to find their personality for their horse, because even when we've, we've gone to meet real horses, their owners say how different they are. It takes three puppeteers to make Joey as lifelike as this, to the extent that he can even gallop across the stage with a rider. From the grave, a new year will rise up again. What they do, um, is take an audience on a journey of imagination. I think, you know, we don't hide anything. You can see the puppeteers. It allows an audience to dream and imagine. And so you go on a journey as an audience member with the horses. So I think it's, a, it's epic theatre for sure. The show will run for four weeks at the Hippodrome from October the 16th and according to producers, promises to be just as inspiring and heartwarming as the West End production. Victoria Davis, ITV News, Birmingham. So clever that, isn't it? Incredibly lifelike, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah, yes, yeah. I think they're going to be busy for those four weeks. Mm. Now, um, you may have noticed by now that we've had the decorators in and, uh, you know, they've spruced the place up a bit and we hope you like it as much as we do. Yeah, it's no more bad. of that yucky yellow. Yeah, Got rid gone. of the yellow. Yes. In <laughs> fact, it's not just us, by the way. The whole of ITV has undergone an overnight transformation to reinforce our brand across the world. And if Bevan's been watching the change take place. It's a new year and a new look for ITV with the biggest change in 12 years. From today, we become ITV News Central, and with our new name comes a makeover for our studio. After Friday morning's daybreak bulletins, we decamped to a temporary studio for a couple of days, and the transformation team started work. Hive of activity, people up ladders, people going through cupboards, getting rid of the old, but most importantly, looking at how that is really going to embellish our news programming and really make that all-important big impact. ITV news viewers across the country got their first glimpse of the new look just after 6am this morning with the first regional daybreak bulletin. The changes to every region's graphics were controlled from our new hub here in Birmingham. It is challenging with a, a lot of preparation and good planning which we hope we've done, um, it'll be quite a smooth transition. It's not just news though, all five of ITV's channels have been rebranded. ITV2, ITV3, ITV4 and CITV. ITV1 has become simply ITV, but its award-winning and ratings-topping programmes like Downton Abbey and X Factor will continue to keep the channel at the heart of popular culture. And at the heart of ITV is still ITV News, both nationally and regionally, with the same reporting and presenting teams you've come to know and trust. People here have been putting a lot of time and effort into making the rebrand a success. We like it, and we hope you do too. And from the whole of the team, across the Midlands, welcome to ITV News Central. Yes, stay with us. Still to come on Central tonight, that all-important weather forecast. Stay with us to find out if more snow is on the way. First, though, let's catch up with the day's sports news. And uh, we're still with you, aren't we, Steve? Yeah, I'm still here. I've not changed. I've found a blue tie. Yellow ones are gone. 
And you mentioned the weather. You can't change the weather either, can you? We can <laughs> only do so much. I said it was a thrilling weekend with crunch European rugby matches, a basketball cup final, and of course a lot of football. ITV Central Sports Report, sponsored by WeWantAnyCar.com, the Cash for Cars website. Another win for Leicester, which included a hat-trick on the way. But we start with the Midlands action in the top flight, where it was three played, three lost. So, 33 disappointed players. But one of those, believe me, is far more disappointed than any other. Well, the best of the rest of the action from the weekend now. Derby lost away, but there was better from Nottingham Forest and Leicester. And after we've seen them, we'll have a look at the All East Midlands clash in League Two. Leicester are back on a roll. Four straight wins and ten goals in the last two league games. And Chris Wood has now scored six in three. A hat-trick on Saturday with all his goals scored in the first half. The 4-0 win was wrapped up by Matty James early in the second. Alex McLeish got his first win as Forest boss against a recently resurgent Peterborough. Greg Holford's effort headed out but deemed to have crossed the line. Peter leveled in the second half, Scott Woodham with the close range finish. But seven minutes from time, Elliot Ward wrapped up the points for the home team. Derby were already two down to Brighton when Jeff Hendrick called one back. The Rams have now lost six of their last eight away games. Elsewhere, there were victories for two of our League Two sides. Chesterfield put three past East Midlands rivals Northampton in the space of just seven minutes. Jay O'Shea with the first. Then just one minute later, Mark Richards outmuscled Clark Carlisle to get his shot away and score against one of his former clubs. And then goal number three, a long ball into the path of Richards, who refused to be caught, slotting in Chesterfield's third. The last time Chesterfield won it was Boxing Day. That was also 3-0. Burton came from behind to secure their fourth home win on the bounce after Ryan Jarvis had put Torquay ahead. Calvin Zola smashed in his 12th of the season in the second half and substitute Matt Patterson secured his side's first win of 2013, six minutes from time. Burton still looking good for the playoffs. Now rugby and Northampton kept their Heineken Cup hopes alive with a win, while Leicester slipped off the top of their group when they drew at Ospreys. While having trailed for much of the match, the Tigers took a five-point lead, seven minutes from time when Niall Morris touched down. But just three minutes later, Jonathan Spratt did the same for the home side to level the scores. Leicester could win their pool if they beat leaders to lose in the final group game on Sunday. However, Northampton must win their last match, with a bonus point as well to have a chance of staying in the Cup, despite victory on Friday with an 18 points to 12 win over Castre. And in basketball, congratulations are in order for Leicester Riders. They won their first Major League Cup in over a decade. In a tightly contested BBL final at Birmingham's NIA, they survived a Newcastle fight back in the final quarter to win by 85 points. To 80. So add on to them. Now, tomorrow is, of course, FA Cup re replays day. We'll be looking ahead to Stoke, West Bromwich, Albion, and Birmingham City as they all try and keep those dreams of a cup final alive. That's tomorrow. Thank you very much, Steve. Right, the ITV News continues with the national and international stories at 6.30. Let's take a look at what's going on. The lawyer for Mark Bridger says his client probably did kill April Jones but they'll say he didn't murder her at the full trial next month. The biggest pension shake-up in decades promises £144 a week for all. Women and the self-employed do best. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh. And Adele, well, pretty happy with her Golden Globe triumph and motherhood. More from her and the rest of the day's news with Mary Nightingale and me at 6.30. Now, many of us woke up to snow this morning. How badly did the region get it? And is there any more on the way? That's probably what you want to know. Well, here's Emma Jess. And Emma, I know you predicted snow 
and we got it. In fact, I met a lady today who said they were particularly fat flakes. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. It's a very precise sight. So, yes, and penguins at Twycross Zoo were very pleased. It's the first time they'd seen snow in a year. They were absolutely loving it. And a lot of you were as well. And crikey, we've had so many pictures in today. Thank you for those. But by 3 o'clock this afternoon, let me tell you, the highest accumulations were over in the East Midlands. Lincolnshire, particularly Cranwell, had 7 centimetres of snow this afternoon, in the middle of the afternoon. Scampton, 6. Watnall, 5 or 4 centimetres centimetres of snow. The outlook is for it to stay cold as well over the next few days and most places were between two and four centimetres and I have to say by midnight tonight we could be up to ten centimetres in parts of the region. Now a few wintry showers are still feeding into parts of Staffordshire at the moment but we're expecting those to kind of pull away a little bit but we're kind of getting it from all angles at the moment so I think I need to put a little more detail over that. Shall we take a closer look at the forecast and you try and keep smiling while we're doing it. What's the weather like where we're going? Sunny. What about the long range forecast? Sunny. Well, now, we've been absolutely spoilt for choice by your pictures today. Very difficult to decide which ones to show. Many parts of the region this morning having several centimetres of snow and continuing through the day as well. It really has been a very wintry feeling day. It's a very complex 24 hours as well. There is an amber weather warning in place at the moment. That means be prepared because we're expecting two to five centimetres of snow to fall generally through the region with 10 centimetres at higher levels, particularly through the Lincolnshire walls we're talking. And then there could be another two to five centimetres overnight tonight. What's going to happen is all the snow, an organised band of snow, is pushing away into the North Sea. Then it's going to pivot and start to return. And, and as it does so, it's going to bring in more snow showers. So maybe another five centimetres of snow overnight tonight. Icy stretches will be widespread because it's going to be bitterly cold, down to minus two or minus three Celsius. And also we're expecting a widespread frost. And then for tomorrow, again, the showers are going to be less organised. They're just going to be more showery rather than an organised band of rain. But there could be some patches snow again with the possibility of two to five centimeters of snowfalls in places. Bye bye. Flyby, sponsors of ITV Central Weather. So that's your weather, and as Emma said, plenty of you have been sending us the images you captured of the Midlands covered in snow. So do head off to itv.com slash news slash central to see those pictures from across the region, and some of them are indeed very impressive yes and we welcome more if you've got more to say yeah. now can i just say bob it is lovely to have you back oh, it's a pleasure so to be welcome here back. <laughs> thank you <laughs> now as as many of you know bob has been resting after having mm. a hip operation just before christmas and we did show uh, the operation a couple of weeks ago and uh, we will be showing those pictures again Are you sure yeah, if you All can right. bear them. Okay. Um, uh, probably, <laughs> if you didn't like them, though, probably best to look away now. Because I have to ask you, Bob, I know we watched it and, mm. and we saw you having the operation. What we didn't see, though, is your reaction to you seeing that operation, obviously. Oh, uh, right. So, yes. I mean, I winced. What was <laughs> yeah. it like for you? Well, well, let's say I was very pleased to be anaesthetised. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite because gruesome, though, isn't but it? it? Well, it is, and yes. But this, I think this sort of operation is. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's you, you look at that. I mean, gosh, banging in a new joint into your yes. hip and so on. I mean, there's no, there's no gentle way of doing it, I, I guess. But this is a fantastic operation. It is the Birmingham hip, and uh, it, it's, it's a worldwide winner, invented by two guys, Ronan Tracy and Derek McMinn here in Birmingham. Yes. And, it, and it's, it's given relief to thousands of people around the world, including me. Uh, you know, I'm walking yes. well already, and that's less yes. than a month after the operation. I know, and he'll be dancing soon as well, I can t guarantee that. If you want to see Bob's operation in full, go to the website, if you can bear it, itv.com slash central. That is Glad it from us. <laughs> Join us tomorrow at the usual time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.